pulling me around now. I can come down a bit. Uh, yeah, I should be getting closer to you there. Jonathan, what are those little red dots? Those red dots are images I just excluded from an alignment. What I'm going to try to do here is uh, I'm going to realign a portion of this. This is the submarine that we uh, saw yesterday that's up on the cruise, the IN-201, the main, uh, the main body of the submarine itself. And what I'm trying to do is there's imagery that fills in these little holes. The ROV pilot at the time got a little distracted and flew a little high. Just joking, Dan. Oh, yeah, I did. I got yeah. distracted. <laughs> so <laughs> I was unsupervised for a unsupervised minute. Unsupervised for a hot <laughs> minute, which is fine. Um, we have a different uh, run here that I'm just trying to coalesce around this so that we can have this complete view of the submarine itself. So It so looks kind of like a ghost, though. It is a ghost. It so truly is. Go one, ahead. One thing that would be helpful would be to have, um, I know either you or Chris can put the those images of the ROV path, I always see them post dive, but if we had those real time, we would know, like I have snail trails here, Yeah. but they're all two dimensional. So yeah. when, uh, we're, when we're doing tight stuff like you that. I, you should have said, I can just turn that on. Yeah. There. <sighs> now you got it. We don't have it in the past though, it only since this has been on, I can make something right. that loads up the past one. No so way. When we're really? doing the photogrammetry, that will, like, we always wonder, do we got good coverage or not? And, um, yeah, Chris. Yeah, it saves all the poses and shows little arrows of where Hercules was pointed and in all the places that, would, that it's been. Oh. You're still dragging me around. I can come down, but I don't know. I, I don't want you to run into me. I don't know what's, why. I don't really know it, what's going on. So. Oh, I'm not moving. It keeps, yeah. it keeps glitching. Let me reset this here. Jonathan, we have a viewer uh, saying thanks for providing the models on Sketchfab. Uh, such an awesome thing for outreach and even research. Yeah, yeah. Can you please make them downloadable? The deck gun isn't right now. Also, please add a preview for the models on Sketchfab. What? Hold on. Jonathan is working on it right now. How do I add a preview? It's kind of um, like when my boss sends me a document on Google. Allow AR. And ask me if I've read it yet, and I say, no, I have no permission. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is, that it is kind of like night. that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How come you haven't done that yet? I can't get into the file. Oh, hi, Samantha. One of my students. Hi, Sam. <laughs> Dan says hi, too. One of my students. Free. What are we doing right now? Right now, we are heading towards another part of this sunken submarine, and we are going to map it. Okay. If it should be downloadable. Okay, thanks. There what are we seeing here? We're seeing you are. 95 meters to starboard, 116 meters to port. Yeah, so you should get a free pass yeah. on the yeah. sub. Yeah, it's a kind of a weird angle, but, you know, whatever. Can we do a, a pass is a pass. I can change my head a little. Oh, no, it won't matter. It's the direction of the line. Roger. This is the best heading. What's going on with the tether? Looks uh, like it's caught on your front. Yeah, good eye. Oh. Got the tether up there. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll just deal with it until we get past the... Uh, Chris oh. gets a sweep here. And yeah, then, good, uh, good thinking. We can deal with it in, in this area that we've already mapped very well. So that's a very good example of why we need uh, tether guards on the on the bumper and the lights and the jewelry up there because when you're doing that kind of work, you have to you can't manage the tether how we normally do with having it all behind us and all nicey. Sometimes you gotta, you know, have your tether in your face, under you, beside you, whatever, to to achieve the task. And if the vehicle slicked up and it can't get caught. Uh, it could still get caught behind the manipulators, but it, like normally in the bumper, it would just slide right off of there. And with You're our right. bumper, we have like reindeer horns that <laughs> can catch anything. Lines, uh, tethers, ropes. Altitude holds all the submarine. Oh yeah. Yeah. Should we it, you maybe want should. Me to we maybe be in should. auto depth. Uh, it's going to be okay once we get in the flat thing. But yeah, act, auto depth might actually be better. Yeah. Sorry. And then maybe I, step I, it. I usually have it in auto depth. Why, why don't I have it in auto depth? Yeah. Was a relatively... Oh, is that it? 
Oh, no, that's another free yeah, pass. Yeah, see, that was a pretty big wiggle. That's that. I should have caught that earlier, yeah, right? Totally right? So, but thank you for catching it, but I should have noticed. Well, I saw, I saw that when we were moving, but I... It just seemed like you were maybe dragging, or I was dragging you or something. But. No, I should have noticed. So, see my, my yeah, aft your, camera? Your cam. It's oh, yeah. how it's bent around. I should have caught that. Can we look at porch view and see if... You care? Uh, it's just caught on the bumper there. I'll okay. be able to turn it and pull it out. Might pull a light or two out with it, but maybe Norbit. <laughs> Not Norbit. Not Norbit. Um, so viewers commenting, excited to find this stream, but sad it. I heard it's the last day. Nice. Are past streams available? Um, so yeah, they you, they can see uh, highlights and things on the YouTube channel. So go to the Nautilus Live That's YouTube cool channel. Yeah. I think it's youtube.com backslash EV Nautilus. Alright, I guess we don't have to. I think it might be at so. EV Nautilus. You can come down Do you want me a bit. To come down? Yeah. Sure. As soon as uh, Chris has the rest All right, of yeah, his that, model. That depth is really solid. Look at it now. Yeah. Whatever Bob did, he got it dialed. He softens the Z up here. Yeah. So the max velocity on the Z softens that up. Alright. Um, and then uh, when I mean, we're. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it's a flat bottom huh? too. So. Oh no. Well, yeah, but you're. Uh, yeah. Okay. Can I uh, do a little pirouette Today? as I'm going here? An hour ago. Yeah. The uh, yeah. somebody's asking. Do your thing. When were the pictures for the 3D model of the I-401 deck gun taken? Uh, about an hour ago. Two hours ago. I yep. Know. I think uh, those are the ones that Robert. Aquaman Waters got on his uh, watch, were they not? Aqualine Waters. I think it might be caught on Norbit. Oh, can it you, is caught on Norbit. Can you look up? Oh, uh, stand by. I hate looking at it in the front camera and everyone in the whole planet can see. Oh. Uh, Oh, no, it's not. It's on uh, just the bar. Yeah, there's a light right there. Yeah. Too many lights. Too many unprotected lights. There you go. Nicely done, Dan. Oh, uh, no. Oh, no. No. Huh? Fine, we were just kidding. It's still on me? Yeah. I'm going to come up a bit. Sorry. No, you're fine. Sure? Yep. Okay. We want to uh, minimize how many okay. things are moving here. Oh, we got a viewer saying, thanks for updating the Sketchfab models. As a photogrammetry enthusiast who works with these same programs day to day, it's incredibly awesome to follow you doing this live and underwater. Our pleasure. Thank you. Okay, let's let the guys up front focus for a few minutes. Yeah. Alright. That's pulling on me now, just FYI. Yeah. Which. <laughs> it's caught in there good. It's in that light I got hanging out yeah. there. That angle on the butt cam is pretty. I think it came out. No, it still got me. Okay. Oh. Yeah, well. Sup there it went. Sup something went. A little. Late adjustment on the fly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That freed it? Yeah, Great. I think so. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All's good. All right. Oh, I probably could have stopped the ship move, but... Well, we, we want to start keep getting over there anyway, right? Yeah, we got places to go. I'm just swinging around to look at you again, eh? And bows to sea. Uh, hold that head for a minute. Yep. I got. I don't have enough tether to turn around. I had to pull it tight there to get okay. it up. He actually might have to come down a few meters so I can okay. swing around because now the <coughs> ship's dragging me tail to tail. Okay, coming down. Okay, so what we're doing now is um, we're finished with the survey of the the large See. section of the vessel. The yeah, let me uh, I'll fly I-401, here. and now we're looking for the front end. And uh, we, the, the information we had was that there was a debris field between the front end and uh, the stern that we've been looking at. 
and we see hints of a debris field and we're following that and we saw something in the far far ranges of the norbit that looked like they might be targets standing proud yeah. of the seafloor so that's the direction we're heading in what was our ideal height 28 meters 25 uh, meters 35 35 we're, yeah 35 for for survey or for searching uh, okay you can come up a Come little on. now, right? So yeah. we're doing this in a mode that brings the Hercules far off the bottom, about 35 meters off the bottom, which lets the sonar see 150 meters or so to either side. So we have the, the best range for uh, surveying and for detecting things. Uh, so you won't see anything in the uh, from the cameras. Uh, but as soon as we find something uh, with the sonar, we'll then uh, move down and take a, take a look at what it is. And then it'll get interesting for you guys again. And we think we have probably. Oh. See, there's your pose array, Dan. Yep, 150. Yeah, I forgot all about those. 150, yeah, were maybe there. 200 meters to go. I just so forgot about 15, 20 yeah. minutes. I think I have a way to republish them from recordings too. So if we have to pull them up after the fact. Yeah. I can. It's not built in nice to the GUI or anything right now, but we do have a way to do that. Another super fun thing to do with all this information you have now with the map and uh, yeah. and the uh, photogrammetry is to overlay it and put it in a KML file and put it in Google Earth. Oh, that's easy. Are you alright if I swing around and look at you? No, I'm coming under you. I'll get out in front of you here in a second as soon as I figure out why I have no control of the vehicle. Uh, details. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, so that's something else people can download and play the KML file, and they can, yeah. if you overlay the map. Yeah, that's true. In in uh, yeah. somewhere where we can, yeah. so you can overlay all that bathymetry in, in yeah. Google Earth, and with the KML file, you can have all the images, so they can actually fly the uh, mission themselves, right? Yeah. They can fly along and see, and then all the. Um, yeah, I think we already have though the poses exported to KML. Does for the Hercules does track, so we could do that. Yeah, but we don't publish them. Does no. Google Earth uh, take the 3D model or just? It the does. Image? Yeah, I, if you give it a floating point geotiff, it'll it, it will. it'll okay. do it. Yeah. Good. Good. So yeah, that's a really good idea, Dan. Uh, not my idea. It's uh, the Repos kids do that. Mm. Um, it's pretty cool because all the um, all the digital stills are in there. You don't have the video because that's a huge file. Otherwise, I suppose right. you could. Okay, I'm blasting along there. Should uh, be coming right under you, right? All right. But yeah, I thought it was pretty cool to see the. So it's like a first-person view. The, your heading should be. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna tweak it here. Okay. Right about now. Two eight five again, or a different one now. Two eight five. Roger. Okay, we are indeed in auto depth, or is it 35 meters heading, uh, let's tweak that one, 285, and step forward, let's see if it takes it this time, yeah, that's happy, off we go. We have a viewer asking, uh, did I understand that correctly, that we are recording uh, for a IMAX uh, movie? The, well, the, the Johnny can, can answer that better, but I think that these immersive runs we uh, are doing, like the last run on the I-401 we did, are designed to be optimized for things like an IMAX theater or a big a star, dome, a, a yeah, dome, dome, a dome theater, display. like the kind of a planetarium. Yeah, or, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But all, but also for um, a VR headset or what's getting really popular now with both of my kids have is a big giant wraparound gaming oh, yeah. screen. Yeah, that that would uh, be cool. Like, and I don't know if you've seen any of this footage from the. Uh, we have one of those uh, screens in the forward uh, lounge up there, so you can go up there, get Jonathan to take you up there. And oh yeah, the little cur the curve, the yeah, play place. some of that video there. So I think the idea was to bring that for uh, bring that uh, into the into our lounge tonight, and so you can oh yeah, some of for movie night. Chris, if you if is it conceivable, you can just uh, turn Herc and take a scan of that 
Uh, I don't think we're far enough yet for it to matter. Uh, I guess we are. Yeah, I think you are. <laughs> we're not, I mean, our, our initial line was, what, right here, so we're not yeah. that much further, but yeah. Larry's well, saying we, did, we could we reach did. out with a hand of Norbit and touch it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know, so um, before we make that call, I just want to, so we are actually getting decent scans of poorly yeah. surveyed uh, yeah, okay. sur right. debris I, yeah, field no, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, all right. So I'd rather Go not. Go ahead. Uh, fair, yeah. fair enough. I'm just, you know, I'm just anxious. Here. Yeah, yeah. I understand. I yeah. had the same thought, but I, did too. I think it's better to just be patient <laughs> at this point. Well, I, so I always need people to tell me to be patient. Patience is not one of our virtues, is it, Larry? No. <laughs> <laughs> Roger. I think the footage will even be impressive on a, on a, uh, uh, a tablet or a, oh, yeah, a mobile yeah, no, device. I, I, absolute, I absolutely yeah. agree. Uh. I look at that kind of footage on my tablet, and it's uh, like I can look at the same GoPro run two or three times, for example. And every time I look at it, I see something different because I can pan around in the video. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing like a, a rapid mountain bike uh, down, down the hill, and you're wearing the GoPro and you're capturing that, you know, wide angle. Uh, you're passing things that you don't see while you're making the run. And if you go back and, and watch the video, you know, you're passing, you, you can look to the side and, and see all kinds of stuff you, you don't see while you're actually there doing it, which is kind of weird. Same with, uh, like with a drone run or, you know, put it on while you're zooming around on your boat or your skateboard or anything else so to have that technology on the ROV is I think a lot of people will consume that kind of media they already are right they just don't have any subsea version of it well that's what we're doing at least creating the content yeah Auto depth. Nice. Is it still bouncing yeah. a bit? Oh that no, it's uh, it's really st st steady. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, Alan, Alan and I are witnessing John centimeters playing back here. It's really uh, he's down in the data lab, but well, he's got he's some really amazing stuff popping up. Yeah, we have it on our screen in front of us too. That's the. It's very distracting. <laughs> <laughs> 140 millimeters. <laughs> Should have reached the craft out. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that would be sweet. <laughs> to grab it with the magnum on one hand and the craft on the other hand. That's maybe really we maybe we can do that in a video game. Yeah. That's a really good model. Yeah. See that? That's. Five centimeters. Five centimeters? Yes. Yeah. Pretty awesome. A big uh, part of that deal is having Atlanta and Hercules lined up. Yeah. So it's not trying to drag that to their sure. sideways. Sure. And how's our he our heading is like pretty good too. This is looking awesome. Yeah, no, we're going to head right, right to the meat of it there. Yeah, this is a really, yeah, yeah we're doing. And, and you did it so quickly. Uh, yeah. So you can see the, this is a big debris field. Lots of objects. So we are currently uh, mapping a nearby area that looks like a debri debris field, and we're looking for the bow. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. yeah. And so uh, give us a few minutes. Yeah, and uh, Just a few minutes. Uh, yeah. well, there's certainly something that stands a little, a little proud. Uh, yeah. Any minute. There it is. You excited, Larry? I'm I excited. Am, I am excited, yeah. 
Let's see. Yeah, so that's the whole area we covered so far. <laughs> He's got the person in there for scale now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I noticed yeah. that. I don't think your scale's quite right. <laughs> He can make it any scale he wants. Yeah. Right. <laughs> there he goes, scaling it by eye. Precision eyeballing it. Look at him go. <laughs> Artistic license there. Yeah. You know, your standard 140 millimeter uh, gun, you know, <laughs> he happens to know its size. Yeah, that's true. He knows the dimensions. It's easy. Yeah, we well, got a good scale reference there. Oh, we should have turned the lasers on when we were looking down the barrel there. Nah, we can scale it the real way. The real way? With science and math. <laughs> I kinda and like geodesy. The, the, empir the um, uh, empirical way. To okay. I like both, actually. Everybody put your seatbelts on. Here we go. Let's see if those are things, or if they're noise. Or they're noise, yeah, that's the other... The other uh, Way the other outer possible. beams, it's always risky. Yep, I agree, but there was a little dots in between that kind of... But it does jive with the re dive report, moving? right? Right. What's that? Are you still moving? Uh, I should be, yeah, uh, 200... Yeah, he's moving. Okay. Meters to go. Oh, I'm watching. <laughs> here, we, um, can, we can pull up here. It's you got what Chris has over there. Yeah. I'm getting uh, whiplash trying to look at either one. We're not using that right now, so. Yeah, certainly on this map, if you look at the Rovnav screen or high pack, I guess I haven't been looking at high pack. It certainly looks like something on there after we did the yeah. the averaging and whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, that. And that looks like, yeah, that looks distinct, that looks distinct, but, right. you know, still could be. What's the, uh, what's the high-pack resolution at this step? The high-pack resolution? Or, yeah, the uh, multi-beam resolution. Sorry. The Herc multi-beam? No, the ship's multi-beam. Oh. oh the Less than a thousand meters. I mean, meters. The, the, map, the maps that we have, I think, are like 50-meter grids. Yeah, so. the, sh right. the, the ship's multi-beam would have seen these, the, the, these, yeah. big, these big things without a problem, yeah. This is a uh, UH multi-beam? Huh? Uh, yeah, GMRT, I think. GMRT, yeah. So. Hey, guys, this is Data Lab. Sorry in advance. We're going to have to take over Triclops and start organizing footage. Sorry, Jonathan. Say again. I said sorry in advance. We have to take over Triclops and start organizing footage, so it might be kind of distracting on the screens for you. <laughs> Roger, we're not, we're not uh, displaying we're it. We just have your computer up here, but... We're just looking at the Norbit, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what they all say. <laughs> we don't need more. I, I, uh. Uh, we have a viewer from England that's enjoying the dive. Uh, they say the images are just incredible, even streamed over YouTube. We can't wait to see the director's cut. A huge thank you for all you are doing. Uh, and then we have somebody else asking uh, how they can print in 3D. Um, so if you go to sketchfab.com backslash EV Nautilus, uh, you can uh, view some 3D uh, images there, and uh, then they're also print. We got something coming up in Nader there? Maybe, maybe not. That's sketchfab.com backslash EV Nautilus. Yeah. Yep. Well, sure enough, something where the something outer beam said there would be, yep, so that's yep. a good sign. There we go. And then it looks like we are seeing some stuff in our map that we are creating right now with the K2 high resolution multi beam scan. <laughs> Not at all. I'd, I'd be honored. <laughs> and Dan Dietz has joined us. We haven't done like introductions today. No, we <laughs> Hello. haven't. We're still excited. Thrill yeah. a minute. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ale. <laughs> I am the SCF on the 12 to 4. Dan. Oh, hi. I'm Dan Dietz. I'm just sitting in the science seat to watch the Norvis mapping. And kibitz. Um, and kibitz. Yes. So in my day job, I am a program officer at the Office of Naval Research. And our job is really to, we have, uh, it, we, we do everything from basic science, which is like hypotheses. So 
what intensifies hurricanes and trying to study that or or you know typhoons depending on you know which you know which bridge, continent we're bridge on. nav uh, add another 100 meters to the move to all the way to developing new technologies so often they will research develop undersea gliders remus vehicles uuvs um buoys you know you that hit, kind of uh, stuff so hit blue? we do a lot of stuff roger and I'm Larry Bayer. I'm the watch leader on this watch. And my day job is the director of the Center for Coastal and Ocean Mapping at the University of New Hampshire. Taylor Ann. I'm Taylor Ann. I am the science manager and data logger on this watch. And when I'm not on the Nautilus, I am a research assistant at UCLA and a master student at Cal State Northridge. K2. Hey. I'm uh, Chris Kwasnowski. I'm here uh, as a navigator and running the high-resolution mapping system. Dan in her chair, and this kind of is my day job. <laughs> and night job, sometimes. And night job. Yeah. Rye? Yeah. yeah, I'm Rye. I'm sitting in the Adelante seat today, so I'll be your bird's eye view of what Hercules is doing. And uh, my day job is a project engineer for Ocean Networks Canada. And my name is Manel. I'm sitting in the video engineering seat. I'm the video engineering intern. Uh, and my day job is a science communicator, filmmaker, and photographer at Maryland Sea Grant. Great. Chris, when we go by these targets, I'm wondering if it's worth kind of just doing a, a spin around and seeing if we see something even larger out ahead, or we take uh, the time we have to get down right. and, and why see what we, these are. Why don't we continue this until we at least pass yep. these last couple yep. outcrops here? Exactly. Yeah, because yep. these are definitely larger mm -hmm. targets, but... Yep. What's happening? Did I stop? Uh, I don't know. You're falling behind me. Uh, what? Sure. what are you doing, Herc? What are you, you doing maybe here? you run out of move. We were no. It should have not. It's like not taking the. I had like 300 meters clicked in. Still had two go. Yeah. We definitely stopped, didn't it? Chris, can you measure the long linear thing that's uh, there? Yeah. Yeah. Measure. From there to there is 18.7 meters. 18 meters. Hmm. Too long to be a torpedo. Could be a section of pipe. Yeah. Or it's, I turned my, uh, somehow turned my jug end up. Though the dive reports did say there is a torpedo down here by right. some rock, you know, so it does make sense. Uh, yeah, all those all those things we saw in the outer beams did end up real, being yeah. did end up being things. Yeah. So that's interesting to know. That's good. That could be a torpedo by a rock. Did anybody see a report on how big the bow section was? How long it might be? Damn. And yeah, did we get a bearing relative to the? No, there was no bearing. It just said it was to about 250 <laughs> meters away. So I think we're, we're certainly, you know, this is the debris field. There's certainly lots of interesting stuff there. I just, I don't know how big a piece we're looking for.
Hey, Nautilus, this is Hans. Well, judging from where the main break is forward of the conning tower, the bow is considerable. Yeah, it, um, should, it should be a large piece. Yeah, that, that's, that's what I was thinking. You know, yeah. beyond 50, 60 feet, beyond 20 meters in length. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, sorry, I got the bridge's mic was latched. I couldn't hear anything for a second. Um, are we... Uh, oh, oh, here's something big coming up, I think. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we oh, go. Here, here yeah. we go. There we go. There we go. Uh, yes. and, and Larry, I have it at 80 feet. 80 feet the long. The bow is 80 feet long. Okay. Well, very good, Hans. Yeah. I guess we just keep the moving. No yeah. need to spin. Yeah. No, that's great. Okay. Yeah. Now we have something of some substantial size. Uh, viewers at home where are looking at uh, mapping and uh, basically seeing where we're going to target so that we can uh, see the bow of this uh, scuttled submarine. So when you hear people commenting about what we're seeing, it's uh, we're looking at some uh, maps. And uh, we'll be descending on it soon, so just be patient. Yeah, and this is, th th this is it for sure. It's uh, very, very uh, bow-shaped <laughs> and growing with each sonar ping. And the hangar deck, th the hangar deck is 115 feet. Wow. So, if, in case, you know, we're looking well, at things. It could, so, it could be either it one of those. It could be that. Yeah, I didn't realize that the hangar deck was that large. It's separate as well. Yeah, all right. So, yeah, we actually got a really good pass on that. Yeah. Uh, it looks like we got the side that it's the broad side. Mm -hmm. So, we could get away without another pass on this. It's still going. I, I keep yeah. going. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, obviously finish this pass, but yeah. I'm thinking a couple steps ahead. Yeah. Um, We'll go and do a little bit past this before we land, and then you want to do you want to do another mapping pass, or do you want to go down and no? I think see let's it. see. Let's see what we okay. have two. We have an hour and a half. Yeah, we don't so have enough time for that. Yeah, All right, let's, Roger. Let, let's let's let people see what's there, and let's let us see what's there. There's another large large piece of debris right at the far end on the on the port side but not, not nowhere near as large as... Yeah, yeah that, that, that's that definitely looks, it. That looks like a bow. Look at that. Yeah. 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 That was kind of a perfect yeah. angle to get it. Yeah, yeah that, that is awesome. a bow. And so this all just broke apart, including the hangar deck when they were scuttling it. Um, yeah, so I, uh, three major pieces. Stop the ship there. Uh, we'll yeah. Swing in. We'll swing in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bridge, bridge, nav, hold position. Yeah. come down at all and uh no we'll just let uh atlanta swing in and we'll yeah. keep uh map until we atlanta stops moving and drop down and have a look i'm going to see if i can get another nav up here so i can go make these dive maps all right i could probably do it up here because we already got it all set up yeah, you can. I don't think we'll be moving the ship too much. Okay. I can I can move the ship. Okay. Yeah, if it comes to that, we'll just... Uh, it's not like we're planning a big long dive of the no. 20 but meter it'd be, moves. Yeah, but it'd be nice to get the imagery in so we have some targets to hit. Yeah. No, oh, go ahead. Uh, whenever you're... I think maybe another 10 meters there. Yeah, just whenever you're... Uh, That's awesome. Do you want me to let my heading get turned around? I'm gonna uh, drag soon, so. Uh, I'll right, hold it there. Okay, you happy, Chris? Yeah. Okay. One second. Wait, before you do that, let me. Uh, my holding position. I'm gonna. I want. Yeah. Be, I don't. Just so I don't have less to clean. I'm gonna put a break in the log. Okay. Shadow that's cast there. Okay, you can uh, go. Uh, uh, another another right. very large shadow cast by the end of the the end of the bow section. We 
Dan's room now. Yeah, coming yeah. out. Sorry. Yeah. So Dan, you 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 get good enough an idea. What's that? You you have good enough an idea what that looks like and yep. a good way to explore. All right, and this will, this map will remain up. So. Okay. Yeah. That that's really helpful. Okay. All right, I'm going to switch over to processing mode. You good for a minute? I'm good. Chris, can you do a measurement on that before you pop away? I sure can. Forty-five meters. Forty-five meters, okay. So that's 130 feet. So maybe that, well, I think that looks yeah, like... Yeah, but that. I mean... I. That's certainly it, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, and I also, I, you know, I, I, it's hard to make a measurement from a submersible in yeah. terms of how large something is. Can you just touch uh, engineer there? Yeah. There it is. There it is. Oh, here we go, boy. I'm just saying, dive reports tell me the uh, main body was 300. Can you uh, just let Jonathan know if he wants to record any of this? Data I, lab, he, data he, lab nap? He, yeah, he doesn't. He said he didn't, but uh, but he may not realize how pretty it is. <laughs> Might as well give him the option. Uh, why don't I just uh, walk down and talk to him? Sure. Okay. I'll be right back. All right. Dan, Dan's going to go talk to him. and. So we should see the torpedo tubes here too. And this had uh, this kind of very unique uh, over under eight, eight tubes. Oh, here he is. It's up to you. We right, have one torpedo tube on top of another. Yeah. Really? Are you rolling there, Johnny? Well, good job. But I already get my cylinder torpedo tube. What do you say? He said he already get. <laughs> Why not wait? <laughs> Just past the two doors and a retractable dive plane on the bow. Hey, John, is it possible to put the cameras up even though they're not recording? If not, if not, no big deal. I'll just fly to this. Can John, you, uh, John's, get, John's getting set up back here. What do you want? That one. Okay, I'm back. So does that groove lead to the torpedo door, or is that...? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's about the end of your tether there. Roger. I think the torpedo door is behind us. How large is this object? 140 feet or so. Well, the marine snow's gotten a lot better. <sighs> right. Okay. Hot. Bridge, yes. nav, 20 meters, 045. Okay, here's the situation. Okay, so are we still orbiting? What are we? No, 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 wait, no we're done orbiting. Wait, waiting for you to turn on some cameras. I'm moving the ship, so you got about. Four minutes. I would send, yeah. Okay, yeah, we have Four minutes. Controller. And then we go minutes, over here. 59 seconds. And I say CURL in limit. Nope, out limit, because obviously that makes sense to zoom in. Oh, yeah. Okay. And. Coming back towards your right, we'll come around yeah. look at the other side there. I ran out of leash. I was looking for. Torpedo tubes, but maybe those are. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Maybe that's these down here. Well, they have covers on them, but I, I, mm -hmm. yeah, it could be that. I, I did. That looks like a. That's where I'd put the torpedo tubes. Nano timer dot P Y. Nano timer dot P Y. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. All right, you're Python timer dot pi. Oh, Python three. Blinded me with that big white screen. Oh, I like just didn't move the screen then. Okay. Uh. All right, you up and going? I'm up and going. All right, we'll just uh, circumnavigate, I guess. All right. You gonna uh, get OBS going too? No. Roger. Um. Let's see. Oh, we we can't easily route data proc four to any of those screens, can we? No, just get it going in the. Uh, I know. Well, we're trying to get stuff done on that. Okay. Oh, come on! You got another hour. Take All a right. take a break. Enjoy the ride. There's no break. No break. Only work. You only get this ride once in your lifetime. If if anyone can hear down in the data lab, we're about to hear a what just happened as I kick. Oh, bye. That's <laughs> mine. What the heck? Oh, fiddlesticks. Once in a lifetime ride. Can't buy tickets for this one again. Yeah, yeah. All right. What am I doing? Yeah, Torpedo open. doors were to the right and below those first two we saw. Yeah, I think we saw the yeah, covers yeah. of them there. Yeah, thanks, so. <sighs> Covers of two of them, and there are four on each side. The upper deck has some really fascinating features. The catapult ramp, the pontoon ramp, the aircraft recovery crane. So last time they said it was the frame of the frames on the sh they yeah, were numbered by frames, not by length. Yeah, I think these these are probably by length because we um, we saw at the very end some of your cable, huh? 390, which is about okay uh, for a 400 foot. You know, it was about 10 feet from the end of the of the other the other Love end that of it. Cable. Here's the forward end of the launch ramp and the catapult. Yeah, so th these are the degaussing cables that kind of come off the side. For some reason, I don't think my knife would cut those. Yeah. I would recommend <laughs> not. Yeah. Uh, viewers asking, how did the hull end up so far away? Well, uh, that's a good question, but I would guess that we're in 800 meters of water or so, and if the two parts were... All right, you can put that back up. Separate, right near the surface, Satellite and they had different hydrodynamic behavior. There's Thank probably you. enough enough time for them to drift drift apart to sink differently in different directions. But that's just a wild guess. Maybe Hans or somebody has some more insight into that. Well, I think you're right. We can always conjecture that shapes like this can fight a little bit on the way down. We break up higher up in the water. Uh, yeah, it could have been a number of factors, including like, did the did the you know the tail looks like it sank first, right? right. So did the stir, you know, did they bridge nav two zero zero four five? Uh, did the bow essentially, you know, just not sink as fast and then float it with the currents more than the tail did? There's a bunch of reasons why it could be. What's that white circle there? Yeah. Oh, it's a hatch. It's the that looks like a hatch cover, and that looks yeah. like the inside of it. Open the hatch yep. is open. Yeah. Come down a bit for me. It's right? a good shot of the raised catapult ramp and the forward deck. Yeah. So it was that like that catapult was 120 feet long or something like that. Is that? I'm trying to remember how long it was. Shrimp. And and Hans, do you know was it a, a steam catapult yeah, or? Yeah. Come down another five. Yeah. How, what what propelled the? 
Should get relief in a minute when the bridge get, or the ship gets well, closer. You know, I, I really don't know. I did see pulleys in the okay. forward part of that um, ramp, and so it looks like they were pulling a cable, yeah. but I, I don't know. Sorry, just coming down okay. slow. Okay, Dan, did you hear that? What's that? Jonathan is set up in uh, photogrammetry mode, so you just uh, fly systematically, he said. Whatever Roger. That means. Where it's where the tether is? Systematically. Yeah, yeah I, fine with me. <laughs> now, I do know that they could assemble and launch a Sayran bomber aircraft in maybe 15 minutes once they first. Yeah, I, I, I read that. It's <laughs> just remarkable. I think the, the, the comment was they can get the first two planes out in. in really really quickly they must have been mostly assembled but it was the third one that ended up taking them as much as 45 minutes and that was their one of the vulnerabilities and uh, interesting so I, I assume that for storage the third one was probably much more disassembled you can uh, come back up just a little or something. Yeah. okay so I'm not blind any of that one Dan, uh, we have a request for lasers at some point. Just Roger, for lasers are on. That's good height there. Ah, good somebody somebody just uh, came in and said the catapult was pneumatic, so air pressure. Thank you. I think, yeah. Yeah, there's a fish right there. And I think this is the same type of coral, uh, Taylor Allen? Yeah, it seems like we're actually seeing a lot more on the lower portion than the higher, uh, which is interesting. Huh, there's a pulley and some chain. Or a pulley and a wire rope there in the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A very good eye, Dan, yeah. Wow. So Two of them. One upper and one lower. Yep. I wonder where their purpose was. Something up here. Uh, viewers saying the slot next to the catapult ramp is for the aircraft recovery crane, I believe. There's a pulley okay. there, too. There's, yeah, the pulley continues on, yeah. I'm reading eight meters above the hull, just Yep. You can come up just a little bit there. I think we're good for lasers for a while. Do you want right to turn there. them off? Yeah, don't want to hurt anything down there. Yeah. They just want them periodically so that yeah, we can just calibrate judges, for a couple yeah. couple yeah. frames. Uh, go uh, start over at the hole there again for the photogrammetry real quickly. 30 feet away. Yeah, who needs who needs lasers when you have marks on the <laughs> on the hull? <laughs> Precisely yeah, measured. There's ten. <laughs> uh, and somebody's asking the name of the coral again. I don't want to pronounce it wrong. Uh, Hemicorallium are the big pink ones that are like fan shaped, and then the bottle brush ones are Chrysogorgia. We've also seen some uh, Faraday sponge. Not as many, or I don't think I've seen any yet, uh, anemones like we were seeing on the other. Oh, there's one right there in the middle of the screen, actually. That's all you have to do is say you haven't seen them. <laughs> I haven't seen a monkfish. <laughs> um, 
Somebody's commenting that they haven't seen any primnoids like the sub from last night. Yeah, so on the other portion, there was, I think, maybe one primnoid like that. But yeah, definitely so not the dominant community here. Seems to me that would be a really interesting study. Why that they're not that far apart. No. Why we have such a different assemblage. Yeah. It's also some mushroom coral recruits I've been seeing here and there too. The really small red mushroom. Now th coral. this one did have the um, that um, acoustically absorbent paint when the other one didn't, uh, and that may have something to do with what can grow or not grow on them. But oh yeah, that would be interesting. That's, uh, Oh, somebody said they saw a monkfish underneath the propellers on the other part of the submarine. Oh, yeah, I think that was oh, just, just when we I came missed, in. I think I missed that. <laughs> yeah, that was, we yeah. have to come up with I think, is so that the one probably right now that you saw? Yeah, that's the one. Oh, so sad. This portion also seems to be more rested than the other piece yeah. we were looking at, but... I also didn't get to look at that piece as much as the entire last watch did. right a little for me. Yeah. Bridge nav, 20 meters, zero four five. If Hans is still out there, uh, I'd, uh, I'd like to use, use him all the way out. If you can comment on the degradation yeah, of the deck, so. oh, how okay. different that yeah. was in Let's check it. 2009 or 2000, whenever the last time you dove was, or maybe maybe it looked the same. You know, 2005, but uh, my memory isn't what it used to be, you know. <laughs> so I'm many sure checks. the wooden remnants are a little further deteriorated. I'm pretty positive about that. But I couldn't tell you how extensively it's changed. Uh, viewers asking you, Taylor Ann, uh, there was a very long eel earlier that looked more like a snake. Do you know what kind of eel it was? Um, not too sure. I'm, I don't know if I saw it close enough to get a confirmed ID on it. Um, but if we see another one, I will try to get a closer look. Come down a bit for me there, if you want. Yeah. At the other sites, though, we were seeing um, really thin eel-like fish that are in the, um, that were, I think they were halosaurs, halosauridae, um, specifically Aldrovandia, but not too sure about what we saw here moments ago. I think there's one right there at the top, but yeah, way too far away to to say. Hey, Nautilus, this is Hans. I was just looking at a couple of those pictures from 2005, and you know, it does look like there's a little more wooden deck on it back then, so there has been significant change over time, not 15 years ago. Well, thank you, Oz. Another hatch there, it looks like. Emergency escape, maybe. On the uh, upper part of the camera. Yeah, I see that, Dan. But that one's closed. Yeah. Yeah.
Somebody has a nice little home there. got coming up to your right there, right? Big, sharp, jagged thing. Yeah, it's not showing up in my sonar, though. So. Yeah. Tether slicer. <laughs> <coughs> you want me to come up? Uh, I'm going to look down. Yeah. You, I think the tether's above it. I just don't want it, the tether to bounce into it. We're at 810 right now. So. Yeah, probably come up a little. I want to get our tether caught up on it. Nope. I'm going to come around here in a minute. I don't, I don't see anything that uh, it's convincing, but we can, we can take some time to just look at uh, another hatch, some machinery in there. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we, we can just see down to the, to the pressure hole there. Below. There's that big recovery crane lying in its cradle in its notch. The whole definitely. Crane. Definitely looks like wood, doesn't it? So who, somebody said yesterday yeah, this yeah. was some kind of Cypress from Taiwan. Uh, somebody's asking how many people crewed this sub. Yeah, approximately 150. Uh, numbers range between 144 and 150 something. So. It's a lot of people. It's a big submarine, but it's still a lot of people in a small space. Yeah. Um, and somebody else is asking how far was the other part of the submarine, and could that affect uh, the, the different things growing on it? Um, the two parts were separated by about 250 meters. So, um, so, th so somebody chimed in and saying that uh, they're just kind of little different neighborhoods for corals. And, I think it just depends what lands yeah. on it, you know. Taylor Ann, what kind of coral do we have um, on the end of this yeah, debris I'm here? I'm thinking it's a Chrysogorgia, but I'm not sure. Uh, Chrysogorgia day. Um, maybe Chrysogorgia flavescens, but Ooh. I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with this one. Gotcha. I'm looking at my guide for confirmation. Uh, somebody uh, says they think that they spotted a stony coral.
Yeah, a big sponge. Hey, Larry, what details did we have on what the hangar section, where it was supposed to be? I don't remember. It's in the vicinity, and it was almost oh. vertical, so it really ended upwards from the east floor, if it's still upright. Yeah, I but haven't, I haven't I don't seen, remember honest, but I haven't seen a target that kind of is convincing. Yeah, well, because we, I don't know, I was just looking, because we have some larger... I understand the hangar section was heavily damaged, right? Yeah, all right. Well, maybe when we're, we still have uh, an hour. So okay. We Drop finish here. We, can, ex for we me. can explore some okay. of those other targets and see what we see. Yeah. But we'll, we'll do it without coming up. We'll just keep down that, and looking. That guy there is kind of interesting, too. Yeah, so let, let, me, let me put high pack on. It's about 10 let meters me above the... frame up the whole thing for okay. you here. Yeah, so I would think the one, the probably the most sensible one to go to is the one. Yeah, that's it, that one. That one there. Yeah. 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 We can maybe like hit that along the way because so that should be within a tether length. Yeah. There's a couple, and then if that not, maybe he'll start heading down this way. Exactly. We could, exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Cool. John, you still in here? What's that? No, he's not. No. Yeah, that would be interesting if there's time. I appreciate that. In 2005, it was still cylindrical with the door attached and nose down into the sediment. But that's yeah. not to say it hasn't fallen over and collapsed. Yeah, and the, and the target we're seeing doesn't, it, it just doesn't have kind of uh, a linear shape. It, it almost, it, well, uh, we'll, we'll see <laughs> when we get there. So, I have that it landed, uh, it peeled away and landed face down, and the door end broke in half with about 40 feet sticking up in the, up from the seabed. Okay. The remainder lay right. among the debris field. Okay, so that, I mean, that is the debris, could, that yeah. is the debris field, and, like that looks, I don't know, that looks pretty good and that looks pretty good. So if yeah. you have height, they say about 40 feet. Yeah, well, there is, there is one, uh, I one, can, if you see there, uh, Chris, there's that one proud, you know, there's something, the, yel the yellow, basically, in, in that says something is standing up. The yellow, uh, here? Yeah, I, I think. No, I think that's a hole. That's an occlusion. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I can, what we can do is pull up the MB proc and I can look at it in Camara. Well, I, I think. Uh, if we want to get, like, if we want to look at, because it's a lot of averaging going on, too, right, in this map. So we can look at raw point clouds and Well, I, I think we should go there anyway. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so yeah, I, we, I don't think you need to pull it up. How much more photogrammetry work do we have? Uh, that. Jonathan's uh, actually done. He, he's, no. Yeah. No, I meant, I meant to complete, yeah. the, complete oh, the bow. Close. Yeah, you can pick it up a couple okay. of meters. So. Dan, when would you think you were complete with this? Uh, I could easily spend an hour here. So how far is the... Uh, it's one, one ship length. Yeah. One ship length? Yeah. I could wrap it up here if you want. And yeah, we have an hour. Do we do we have good coverage, or is there like an area that really didn't get covered? I don't know how good it. It looks like if you do come, if you come, if you come down this, just this way, Dan, looks like yeah, you'll yeah. get at least a full circle. I don't know about vertically, but yeah, you'll I at least complete the circle. I don't think we'll get like the super whammy. No, I, I've been kind of close to. Yeah. yeah. But but he wasn't. He you know he, this is a extra added benefit that yeah and i think it would it, it, it would be worth seeing what these other targets look like too so let, let's let's just come down this side again and then uh and then head off although we're, we're in the best spot now for heading to the okay. other target so you want to give that a shot now larry yeah all right so dan we're going to this guy here I'm going to start the ship moving. You could hit these guys on the way. That should be within Roger. tether length, uh, right? Let me run down the other side of the okay. bow first before we go. Yep. Uh, uh, just get a, do a video, quick video run. Yep. Maybe one ship move, and then we'll come back and then peel off. Seems coming a lot. Great look. See the whole thing here. Good look inside, thank you. Uh, 
at least complete a video survey here. Yeah. Um, you still processing over there? No, I'm uh, done. Uh, give me 20 meters, uh, 225. 225. Roger. 3H nav, 20 meters, Am I on the wrong? I must be on the wrong DP screen. They switch them on you sometimes. Ship's underway. All right, that should give me. Uh, put me in the middle. I should be able to run up and down the the yeah. side of it. Yep. Maybe a little faster here. I don't. I don't know if it's as interesting on this side. I really peeled though. Metal back there, didn't it? Is that like a flange where the pressure holes bolted together? Or is the strength rip? I don't know. So this, yeah, the, so the submarine we saw yesterday was welded. This one is riveted. And they said the pressure hole, yeah, was constructed in all these circular sections. I think that's, that's what we're seeing. Yeah, you can see some of the riveted flanges there. So somebody's asking if the occupants went down with the subs. Um, so no, these were, were scuttled. Uh, they, this one in particular uh, was taken uh, after World War II uh, from the Japanese and then uh, brought uh, to Pearl Harbor and then uh, scuttled. Okay, right, you can uh, turn whatever way 180 that takes our turn out. And I'm going to do a run, just to run down the hole here. All right. Uh, maybe come up a bit there for yeah. me. And we're going to uh, see, you're going to want to turn to your, yeah, come up first for your turn, take that. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Are you going a run up? I'm going to come to the uh, southwest. Oh, okay. So, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, you can turn counterclock. That's fine. Yeah. Just wanted to pick it up there so it didn't hockle. I'm going to come back down. Uh, as soon as you get turned around. Yeah. Let me get out from underneath you a little bit. Get the tether caught up on that. Uh, so we have somebody asking what does scuttled mean? Um, so basically that means it's purposefully sunk. Oh. So 
Um, like the one yesterday, you said that they'd been using it for like torpedo practice, right? Yeah. Yeah, b both of both of these, uh, yeah, they they were sunk. Uh, by the Americans uh, after they had examined them very carefully. And, and interesting, back then there, there was great concern that the Soviet Union would uh, get this knowledge about the innovations in these submarines. So that was part of the, the rationale for sinking. Okay, you should be able to start coming down there. Hopefully right. I can reach the end on this. Right uh, after World War II ended, it was the beginning of the Cold War then. Yeah. <laughs> I think this had three three torpedoes they used. I think two two, two. for this one, yeah. and one for yesterday. And Plus the, and the mystery one. Plus one. <laughs> I thought I read they used uh, three on this. It's. It, I mean, it is really big. You would. Uh, I guess it depends on what article you read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry. Sunk by the USS Cabazon, 31 May 1944, two Mark 18 torpedoes. But again, you know. The article that uh, Jason sent out had reference three. Yeah, no, uh, you know, history is not a perfect. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Whoever wrote it, right? You have made your full lap here too, so. Yeah, Rod. She didn't. I'm just gonna get the pedo tubes up here. You didn't have his cameras on when we came oh, on the site. You can uh, come down enough, Ryan, to give me enough leash to get to the end here, and then. Okay. I'll do a high run up the other side. Then you want to go here, do you, Chris? Uh, right here. Roger. Yeah, yeah but so we we'll, we'll hit that on the way. But I'll run up the other side, then we'll do that. And uh, somebody's asking about our next survey. Uh, so this is our last dive. Oh. Oh. It's about 10 meters up. Should have enough to get around here. So is, is this staining bacterial mats? Is that what we're saying? So I was asking the same question. They almost grow like fungus rings too. Yeah. 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 That's a really nice view. It is. It's always amazing to me how kind of knife-edged. I, I remember seeing the one of the uh, battleships that's in Norfolk, Virginia, which sits there as a museum. And uh, okay. oh, come if on. you look no, that straight on, the, it's a giant battleship, but that bow is like a knife edge. Really small. All right. Katana comes to mind when looking at that shape there. Yeah. So I see the torpedo tube doors. Mm-hmm. Right yeah. Yeah. And I think there are two two lower <laughs> and two upper. Yeah. So two there and maybe two more to the right exactly, and a little lower. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah. There we go. There are two to the right there. Yeah. 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 Two, two, uh, two behind this, Hans. Uh, there's two, no, two to, the to, the left, to the right. right. To the right, yeah. Roger. So now you're getting the... Oh, I didn't see the other two. Yeah, you're, you're, you're getting the top of them right now, Dan. Like, there's these two second ones. What was that? Sorry. They're like right in front of you, the two second ones. Above me, Roger. No, no, no. Right. You, were, you were right on them. Just keep going straight and down. <laughs> it's fine. I got up, down, right, yeah, left. I think you really need to be up for the photo for photogrammetry because it doesn't look like you flew. Oh yeah, in the, the, in the yeah, in the yeah, 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 yeah. They're there. Yeah, they're there. There you go. Yeah. There they are. Yeah. There are the other two. The lower torpedo room. Yeah. I missed that on the way by, or maybe I saw it. Didn't.
Hmm. Uh, somebody's commenting, I wonder if any of the people who worked on these subs is still alive. I would imagine they would be about 95 years old. Oh, the stories. Yeah, I, th I think, I suspect not. Because... Uh, um, Unless they were very young. Yeah. Like 10, 12. And uh, I think I read um, the senior designer of the submarine was actually on board when it was captured by the U.S. and, and actually committed suicide. Wow. He, Yeah, just gonna do a photogrammetry run down the side here, and I'm trying to light both cameras and get the mud line. And you know, it might be too big to do that, but and then we'll uh, peel off when we get done here. So you think about this being all put together, a football field plus another hundred feet. So yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. Think of the dry dock this had to be in. Yeah. So it's probably the same one that they built the battleships. Probably, yeah. I guess because I think that you know, again, as we talked about yesterday, towards the end of the war, they stopped building surface oh, ships that. and focused all their energy on submarines. Yokosuka. Yeah. In Yokosuka, okay, yeah. Still a giant shipyard. Yeah, yeah I was just going to say, still a giant shipyard. You know. I came into Yokosuka and the. Uh, a U.S. aircraft carrier, I think it was a John F. Kennedy, was, was in there for repairs. You can uh, swing back around to your right, would help me. Uh, Chris, you need to start offsetting the ship to get to yeah. where we're going? Yeah, you can start moving the ship. Roger. Let's see, Argus is there, Atalanta, whatever its name is. Interchangeable. Yeah, it's the same. Bridge, bridge nav, six zero meters, zero eight zero. Yep. So uh, Dan, there's a report of a torpedo uh, along the bottom near the wreck, so if you see anything like that. Pick it up. Don't come near. <laughs> yeah. Just zoom. Roger. Fly into it as fast as possible. And have Atalanta position for the optimal footage. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'd be out of a job. Well, I'd have to go back to work for those other folks. <laughs> Holiday would be over. You moving the ship? Yep. It's going. Just huh. started. How about now? Yeah. Still mm -hmm. moving it. Still moving it. Roger. It. Come on, Atalanta. Got places to go. Maybe while you're here, maybe you could reach and check out whatever that we got there. Yeah. There's a couple Just little objects to see along the way. Doing the last uh, sand pass here. Oh, yeah, sure. Get grief from Jonathan loves a good sand pass. He does. Who doesn't, if we're honest, you know? Yeah, work that sand. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to clean off the lenses, that's all. You've got to have a base for your 3D print, otherwise it's, you know... Yeah. Baseless. Wonky. Baseless. Now you're going to mount it. It sets the entire scene. Do you have all the downlights on or something? Why is the image so murky? No. Nope. Um, light years away from it, that's why. Why, why are you light years? Because you want to get your sand pass. This is a bonus pass. Oh. They're pressuring me to move off to some nameless blob out in the middle of nowhere. Right. That's what we're into. I like blobs. How are you going to know what the blob is if you don't look at it? 
Right. We want to go exploring in our last hour here. So yes, please. I think we've gone around this thing three times now. So. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Larry's seen it, done it, been there, got the t-shirt. Oh, look, here's the pedo tubes again. There's a less flocculent sand pass there, Jonathan. Atalanta is finally, you got to move on. Finally. Yeah. I didn't get a good sand pass on the other side, but there's too many things to look at. Say la vie. Wonder what came out there. No takers. <laughs> the bilge pump. <laughs> <laughs> What do you call this, Hans? Looks could be part of the catapult. Uh, Hans had a word for it that was rather cool: disarticulated metallic <laughs> object. <laughs> had to think for a minute. D-A-O. Uh, somebody's asking, how did they manage human waste? That's a a good question. <laughs> yeah, I, I suspect in those days it was just pumped overboard. Uh, yeah. But, but I, uh, they had tanks. Oh, the old, old, uh, I've been on some turn of the century fishing vessels, and they all had tanks, old wooden vessels. Tanks aren't very big, but. Yeah, but I assume they emptied them out there. They didn't. Oh, yeah. They didn't bring them back to recycling centers. Or yeah, much like, I mean, they didn't really take much into consideration about the environmental impact about, you know, scuttling these back in the day, right? Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. Before they scuttled these, they removed the oil and the you know fuel and all that. Oh yeah. But, yeah. but I think we saw yesterday that there were still batteries and things like that. Things yeah. that today you'd never. Yeah. You'd never leave. Leave in the ocean. Yeah. Huh. Seems to be some wood. Um, and somebody's asking, were you able to process all the reality capture footage from yesterday, or is it still cooking in the oven? Um. I think some of it is cooking, some of it's already processed. Yeah, yeah. We, we've seen some beautiful renderings already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can uh, uh, check out the stuff that's been posted on Sketchfab, and somebody's saying that their favorite model on Sketchfab is Herc. And it Aww. is pretty cool. Is that the new Herc or the old Herc that's on there? I don't know. Sorry, Herc, <laughs> Herc uh, 1.5 as we're calling it. Yeah, I think it's still the old one. Yeah, I just know that Jonathan said that it was too complicated to 3D print, but you can look at the 3D rendering. If you're clever, you can blenderize it and simplify it. Still moving, Chris? Yeah, you should be able to reach the next section. If you can get eyes on it, then we can start heading south to see if we can find the hangar section. Right there.
<laughs> Somebody says it's not holes. free H nav. Another not too complicated meters. for me to 3D print. <laughs> huh. So I get ripped all the rivet holes send out of there. Send that picture in. Yeah, send that. Yeah, post that picture. Tag EV Nautilus, please. At EV Nautilus, I think. Or Nautilus Live. At Nautilus Live, sorry. On Instagram. I wonder what kind of fittings those are. Okay. Next. Light the afterburners. I don't see anything else to hit along the way, so yeah. No. Lots of uh, debris. We're going to kind of fly over it kind of quick here. Yeah, that's all right. Hopefully, I slow down long enough to get some images. Disarticulated metal pieces. Moving on. Roger. <laughs> <laughs> there we got it from the expert. <laughs> so what do we think about this in terms of hangar section? No, I heard it from Hans. No? I don't think we're... All right. Well, but we're, we're not over the... Let, let's go through this. Keep the boat moving, Chris. Uh, and, then, and then we'll come, then we'll come south. Uh, we already answered oh, the wait. question about the toilets. <laughs> no, this, this starts looking... Uh... So do we want to head south or are we going to keep this looking? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, Hans, what do you think this yeah, is this a piece of... This, this may be a part of the... Of the hangar. The hangar cylinder, but it's yeah. not the vertical piece we saw on the slide, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this, the, the vertical I, piece may, lo may no longer be vertical, too. Yeah, this is a large, large cylindrical piece with like mounting brackets. Yeah. Oh, there's the anti-aircraft guns. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. And this Dan, you wanted to screw around on the bow yep. section. Yeah. Look what we found. <laughs> yeah, baby. A triple twenty-five millimeter anti-aircraft gun. Oh, th this is the hangar then. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't look like it's vertical anymore. Yeah. It was vertical. It was not the vertical. The vertical piece had the door. Yeah. We haven't seen the door. Okay, we don't see anything from a, a sonar perspective. There are no other large targets around here. Yeah, the only other thing is that looks wait, kind of interesting is, is, down there. is this yeah. guy. Yeah, that's quite a bit away, but let, yeah. you know, let, you know, I mean, it's got, an, it's got well-defined shapes and stuff, so... Right, we've, yeah. got, we've got 30 minutes. If we think we can get there, we can go over those other stuff and... Uh, yeah, you want us to head that way? Yep. All right. That's cool, though. Boy, that's very cool. That's Can mangled, boy. Bridge, bridge, nav, eight zero meters, one nine zero. Can we get a full spin here? Yeah, yeah. we're gonna have good, time yeah. while the yeah, while so Argus. Yeah, yeah. People Just online are excited about the anchor. Which way? Are, yeah. Just so we have some video evidence. Yeah. Affirmative. Yeah. yeah. I think we got to wait for Argus to catch up. Is that it? Argus is on the move. Yeah. Uh, actually, Atalanta's on the move. Argus is in the hangar. Excuse me. Excuse me. Now you got me confused. Yeah. <laughs> it's so much easier to say Argus than Atalanta. Uh, viewers asking for a perspective on the size of this. Uh, so the hangar was 110 feet. Chris, can you measure the the, the Oh yeah, uh, I can uh, actually yeah, do that. We, we get a measurement here. Looks like. 17 meters long and about six meters across. Yeah. So about almost 60 feet. Yeah. 
Is that what they said it was? I thought they said it was 100. Uh, I'm looking 100, up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you do me a favor and turn uh, yeah, spin, spin clockwise? Take yeah. that turn out for me and come up a bit and take it out. Okay. I'm going to come right uh, all the way around it. So. so the info I have says the hangar bay was 115 feet. Yeah. 115 feet long, so maybe we're just seeing part of it. This is, you know, part of it. Yeah, yeah so, I mean, yeah, this is still is 60 feet long, but it is pretty chewed up. Yeah, and I'm just saying, this is not the, yeah. the vertical section they saw originally. Yeah, this is not the forward portion of it. Bri bridge, bridge, now. Uh, the uh, bearings should be... I think the uh, forward portion would zero. have to be wider, uh, too, zero nine zero. Oh, where the door was. Uh, yeah, you can take, do a full spin and take the turn out there. I'm going to head this direction. Is this, I'm gonna head this, this direction figure so eight construction they talked about? I, uh, that always confused me, this figure eight construction. But maybe that's what No, the, the watertight hangar was just one cylinder. Okay. On, on top of the two parallel hulls. Mm-hmm. And when you're done, you can come down for me. Give me some slack. We'll yeah, sorry, get a close-up of the any aircraft guns here. Just taking a minute to get around. Should I read point five? Or should I go around again? Yeah, that's fine for now. Yeah, okay. uh, you're gonna. Yeah, gonna that's pick. fine for now. Yeah. Thank you. Downlight's coming up. Yeah, look at the wide angle view up there. That's that's neat. Got a cooling fan underneath them? Oh, I don't know. I'm sure they got pretty hot. Is that a seat? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe that is yeah, a cooling fan for the guns. Yeah. yeah. Uh, viewers saying it's a hydraulic rotating mount for the 25 millimeter gun. Uh, Roger. Thank you. They're not loaded. <laughs> <laughs> Great images. Well, you know, main body, bow, and the portion of the hangar. This is like icing on the pancake. Well, I'd say, I'm sorry you, you're not here, but you're almost here, which is great. I mean, that's the whole the whole beauty of, of, of telepresence is that you're sharing this and contributing tremendously. I'm going a little fast here because uh, Atlantis forever moving south. Where it should be going. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, 
I'm trying to get a 360 here for the model with the uh, Jonathan's cameras. Look at the teeth there on the uh, rotating gear to yeah. set the elevation. <laughs> Uh, somebody's asking what exact model are the anti-aircraft guns? It's a, a model, a Type 96. It was one of the newer ones in the, uh, uh, during that period, right? That I can't say, but I suspect because it was very late in the, late in the war, so. Yeah, if you look at some of the history of the <coughs> carriers, which we recently, uh, spend a lot of time around they talk about every time they were in and out of dry docks so they were upgrading the uh, and what models they were and why they were upgrading them but okay there you go you're gonna get pulled now uh somebody's commenting while the gun looks impressive it is widely considered to be the worst aa gun of <laughs> world war ii yeah. <laughs> low firing rate, low projectile weight, low pro, uh, projectile speed, low traversing speed. It was a bad design. Okay, this is this is the power of having the experts out there who yeah. can provide these. Uh, I think that's why they kept to us. Why they kept changing them out, you know. Was okay, let's see if we can get to the the last targets. We got 30 minutes. Yeah. Well, Atalanta's certainly making a good speed there. <laughs> yeah, it's going now. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, it looks like you'll be able to hit these few things on the way. Yeah. Ooh, right. what's that? It's like pinkish red. Kind of went by fast. Not sure. Uh, the color made me want to think of snailfish, but the, the tail didn't look right so I'm not sure. Uh, They're going to come right under you, right? The yeah. next <laughs> target there. Shall remain a mystery. <laughs> well, zigzagging for disarticulated mental objects. Chris, why do I have three Hercs on? Because uh, we have three nav solutions. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> fair, fair enough. What is that? Transmission. <laughs> yeah, that was my first thought. <laughs> it looks like a pump and a motor. So the bottom part looks like a pump to me, with the flange on it and a pipe coming out of it. And the other part looks probably a hydraulic motor. I wonder how many pumps and motors there are in a 400-foot submarine. Yeah, I reckon there's a few of them. Too many for me to maintain. <laughs> uh, somebody says it looks like the base of the aircraft crane, maybe an anchor crane. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, could be. There was certainly uh, an aircraft retrieval crane on the submarine. I think we saw we saw parts of it. Yeah, I thought he said that was stowed, right? The yeah, wooden the beam. Yeah. Just happens to be uh, sitting out there, loud and proud for a future 3D model. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see where yeah, we come. I, I, can I can see this new TV quiz show. You know. What's this got a little item? <laughs> and Jonathan produces these 3D models of all these exotic things, and, and people have to guess what they are. Looks like you got a little target here, here, and then on the way to this big guy. Sorry, say what? Looks like you got a little target here, oh, right. and a, one here on the way right. to the big, oh, yeah, yeah, that, big guy. Was that a sea cucumber? I think it is. <gasps> yeah, I think it's a Hensenathuria. Yeah, if you can hit those double, those double peaks there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to take the wrap-up? Uh, no, I'll do a counterclockwise pirouette on the next one. Okay. Just keep an eye on it. We got. Uh, we don't need to be real close during this stuff, so if it starts getting close, you can just come up and keep it tight. It won't huckle.
tank or a pipe or something. Oh, it looks like maybe oh, it was a hatch. Something sticking up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Quick throw the lasers on there, just get an idea of the size. That good enough? I don't, I don't, I don't see them. <laughs> uh, just uh, turn them on. Yeah. All right, I'll put oh, the lasers right yeah, on. Oh, there they are. They're there. Oh, I got it. Okay. All right. Good. You know what I think this is? It looks like a torpedo tube the... or something. <laughs> oh, Hans thinks he knows what it is. Oh, oh good. I... What, what for the uh, for the pontoons, they also had these watertight cylinders oh, yeah. alongside the hangar ah. to stow the pontoons. They had to assemble the pontoons and the wings once they brought the aircraft out. Ah. And this might be one of those cylinders to stow aircraft pontoons. Very cool. But it wouldn't exist. Uh, somebody's asking, are uh, those black objects on the seabed battery cells? I can't tell from here. I, I think that, I don't think so. Uh, you got something I, right here yeah. to look at after you finish this? Shrimp. Something right behind you. Yeah, something big. Yeah. Just want to add that. Are you backing down? Uh, yeah. Our nav's all over the place, but I'm. Um, Watch your. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Atalanta's going to pull your tether over that way. Yeah, yeah we're all right. Well, I can see it in the AFCAMs. Right. I saw a white blob, but that maybe it was a monkfish. No. There's a crab, though, next to those Walteria sponges. Ooh. Yeah, it almost looks like this was crushed by the depth pressure, yeah? I think you're at the end of your tether. I could come down, but it's right above that. Yeah, you can come down a little bit. Okay. Are you still moving or are you stopped? Yeah, oh no, it's still going. Yeah, you could probably hold the ship there, I would think. I mean, yeah, the move's got five meters left, yeah. so. Roger. Let's got to get around the end here for the... That's almost to where we came in. Come down just a bit for me, right? I'm, I'm still coming down. Roger. Oh, there's an object there. Okay, I'm going to... That's... I don't know if I can get around that last bit. You have to give me just a little bit more leash. Okay, you can see where that thing is, though. Yeah. Just need a couple more degrees to complete. <laughs> I have no concept of how close that. If you hit, you're too close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So I, I thought to sit right on top of something. Yeah, yeah, we, we see it. It's trying to complete the rotation here. Okay, you can uh, come up. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to stop the uh, downloads and uh, the photo lapses and start. I, I would keep it going. We got lots of. Yeah, we got two more two more contacts. Just two more two more targets. Yep. Coming it. up fast. Don't come too close to that thing. Yeah, yeah I'm trying to hit it. It's right yeah, here. Just swap before I get my tether up. All right. Uh, here we go. Oh, that next thing looks really interesting. Okay, we're coming in from the north here. Are you holding the ship now? Oh, yeah. See, there's yeah. the anti-aircraft gun at the bottom. This so maybe is the vertical section? Yeah, yeah, this could be the vertical section. Yeah, yeah ship is, is holding. It. Roger. 
There's the hinge to the forward hangar door on the left. Yeah. Just going to the rest of the aircraft. I'm going to come up and get a quick look here before I start circling around. Just make sure nothing's going to fall over on me or catch me. Look at that little pulley there. <laughs> Still rolling, Jonathan? It's still rolling, I can see it. Roger, roger. We want to do a 360 here, or we want to go to the other target under uh, Atlanta? I think we have time to do a 360 and, and still think, go to the other target. I think yeah. so. Because this ought to complete the whole hangar section. Yeah. yeah. This is now icing on top of the icing. On top <laughs> of the <table. laughs> That's fantastic. I think if I come down, it's going to come down directly on top of that. Yeah, you're all right. For now, you can maybe come down a little bit. I'm going to go up and down this one because it'll be faster than doing a bunch of circles around it. Standing off a ways here as we come up. I'll come, we'll come back down and have a closer look after. Could be a new jigsaw puzzle for Bob. You take all these little pieces, <laughs> print them up in 3D, and then he has to reconstruct the entire server. I like it, 3D. Yeah. Yeah. But don't 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 tell him what it is. Exactly. <laughs> meters north for me, please. Yep. Bridge, bridge now, 10 uh, meters due north. Uh, I thought you could do it all from there. Affirmative. Well, that forward door must have been pretty heavy. Yeah. <laughs> I could imagine. Massive. Cone shaped, and so it's pointing down into the sediment. We're not seeing the cone shape of it. You, uh, Zoom in on your model there, and so we can get a sense of what the coverage is. Uh, on where? On your model, to just to make sure I get up and down, and I didn't oh, come around yeah, yeah, too yeah, far. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna do a uh, come up at that angle there. I think I, uh, I probably should be. I um, feel like I should be to the left. I'll do each yeah, side. Yeah, if you do. If I do this side and the other side, because the one, yeah, if I do four sides, that should be enough with these. Uh, 
I would think. Hope. We have a viewer. One, and this is a good question. Why didn't they like, scrap the subs? You know. I I suspect that this is cheaper. Yeah, easier. It's, yeah, it certainly puts them in a place that's not. You, you start scrapping it, and somebody could find pieces and things yeah, like that. Yeah, because they were hunting the technology, right? Yeah. So. And it gives them. A, it gave them a chance to. Uh, I think this one, these Mark 18 torpedoes. I think that was a test. It was a new type of torpedo, so it gives them a chance. You know, it's. See how well it's going to work. Yeah. <laughs> See if they actually exploded when they hit instead yeah. of just hit. Yeah. Well, there was a lot of that <laughs> early Shots parts fired. of the war. Yeah. yeah. Not often you get a submarine to blow up. Exactly, yeah. Moving a little faster than I normally would here for the photogrammetry, so. I think you're fine, Dan. Uh, no, but yeah, f fine for photogrammetry, but a lot faster than uh, we would for a video survey. Oh, yeah. A viewer is saying that uh, there actually wasn't a huge demand for scrap metal after World War II because the entire Japanese yeah. Navy, German Navy, Royal Navy, and a lot of old uh, U.S. Na Navy uh, ships were going to scrappers. It's uh, very expensive to scrap a ship. It's a lot of work, very dangerous, dirty work. There's that door hinge. Look at how oh, massive that is. Wow. Can you turn lasers on, Dan? Sure. Thank you. Get a closer look at it here if you want. Bring the down lights on, it gets some good light on it. So that, that hinge is about 10 inches in diameter. It's, it's pretty That's impressive. Yeah. Uh -oh. All right, we got 14 minutes, yep. guys. All right, yep, moving on. One more target. One more. Uh, I'm going to come up the other side here. <laughs> uh, you think we got enough coverage on this thing? I do. Yep. Roger. Thank you, Dad. Full power, Herc. This might be familiar to some of you. I've mentioned it before, but all of this steel is worth more now because these ships were made prior to the nuclear testing in the Pacific. Yeah. And so they have a very low radiation signature, which is worth more for medical services and medical equipment these days. Yeah, that's so right. Some places in the world are going back and finding these old wrecks and bringing the steel up. I know this is a big, big business in Scatter uh, where the where the German uh, World War One fleet was scuttled. Come uh, up before you do yeah, it. They, they have a quite a. Uh, Enterprise there in salvaging the metal to, to have radio, radioactive free steel or low low background. Is this is this another part of the it looks hangar like van? It looks, looks like, like another part of the hangar, yeah. And this is quite a large target. This is this was uh, actually the largest of the bunch. It looks like maybe part of the conning, wow. conning tower too. Yeah, it looks like it's a conning tower and the and the hangar both.
But the other section may, may be, you know, the aft section may be new, Larry. That I haven't been seen before. Yep. So if I remember, the, the cutting tower was mounted asymmetrically because of the hangar. Right. <clears throat> right. Yeah, I remember seeing this, but that was many years ago. Well, what a spectacular way to finish up. Dan, you can circle all you want now. Roger that. Until it's time to go up. I could spend hours <laughs> here looking at little details. Yeah, no. Oh. This is great. Another another set of guns there. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'll have to come back and get close-ups of those. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to turn the power back down here. It won't spastic on the controls. It looks like the decking there is much better preserved. Uh, you know what? We're here. I'm going to... Sure does. Pick it. Uh... Rye, I think it's your grandma. <laughs> she says, thank you to Rye's crew. Kidding. Uh, <laughs> this has been pure joy. You all are amazing. Thank you. It Hi. is Rye's crew. Yes. <laughs> it is. That's exactly. And we, uh, <laughs> Rye's done a great job. She has. And she's the best roommate ever. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are making me blush. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're here for. <laughs> uh, down lights coming up. Uh, viewers noticing the disturbed dirt on the uh, seafloor from where it impacted. Yeah, we've seen that in some places. Looks like it impacted yesterday from the dirt. It doesn't. Yep. yep. It's, uh, uh, Down lights off. Back away a bit. Is that the beginning of the catapult? Uh, oh, no, the catapult would have to be in front of the hangar. It couldn't be... Uh, and it had three sets of these anti-aircraft guns on it, didn't it? So we should... And we've seen all three sets now? Yeah, I think so. We, we did see three sets. It was yep. funny. It's funny because my note said that there was only one 25 millimeter gun and three of the 140 uh, millimeter deck guns. Actually, four. 